I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rahul Jiwani from IIFL Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Rahul from IIFL Securities. I thank the HESTA management team for giving us the opportunity to host this call. Uh, from HESTA, we have with us today Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, CEO and Managing Director, and Mr. Chetas Patel, uh, Chief Financial Officer. I will now hand over the call to the management for their opening comments, post which we can have the Q&A session. Over to you, sir. Yes, uh, good afternoon to everybody. As always, uh, it's uh, very nice to uh, again interact with you uh, as always. And here I am today to talk to you on the Q1 FY21 result. I am sure that all of you already have uh, the press release uh, with you and uh, I would just directly go on to the subjective matters, the ratios, etc. are also mentioned on page one of the press note and uh, after I finish, uh, we would be open to taking question answers and if there are any specific finance related questions, our CFO Chetas would answer them. So coming to the business, um, Q1 FY21, uh, if we compare it to the Q4 of last year and we compare it to Q1, the sales in Q1 last year, uh, uh, the sales were higher, so were the sales also in Q4 higher. Last year, as you were aware, it was a tough period for us all throughout the year and uh, there were certain uh, <clears throat> reasons for our profitability reaching to whatever it was. So coming back to the <clears throat> Q1, though our sales have been less uh, this year as compared to uh, Q1 and uh, the last Q4, uh, we have done reasonably okay um, compared to the COVID-19 situation Plus, in the month of April, where we were in an extremely tight situation because uh, uh, of uh, lockdown as well as transportation uh, issues. You know, we were not able to move material. Coming under life-saving category, um, we were allowed to manufacture, but then, of course, we could not move the goods. And then things slowly started opening up in the end of April, then May and June. And <clears throat> and uh, so, therefore, our sales with residual sales in April, we did reasonably good in May and better than that in the month of uh, June. Yes, totally, we still fall, fell short of the corresponding Q1 at uh, that point of time. Uh, as I said, the sales progressed upwards. Our gross margins again showed a little bit of a decline and this decline is mainly due, uh, due to the nature of situation in Q1. Now Q1 due to COVID, there, uh, there was a situation where poultry farms, dairy farms, all of them were as much fighting for survival as what overall industry was fighting for survival. During that survival time, it would, it would be automatic that uh, the procurement would be done for those goods and services which are just essential. Likewise, if you talk of vaccines and health products, only the essential uh, vaccines or health products were being bought by the uh, end user um, and uh, our sale of certain products which would have been otherwise high value products for selling like growth promoters, uh, enhance, uh, enhancement of weight, improving the efficiency of feed, improving the milk yield, all those type of products which are even more profitable for us to sell as again as against a typical antibiotic or a one or two low cost uh, vaccines which are given continuously to the poultry farm so <clears throat> we 
did sales but we did sales of products which were lesser in value lesser in profitability and therefore our gross margin showed a little bit of a decline but this surely was a temporary situation and things are now getting back to normalcy at the end of the day a poultry farm a dairy etc they need all inputs they need all scientific input to take on their business further and to efficiently produce meat eggs milk wool etc because ultimately it is an income source for them that is the whole basis of their uh, rearing uh, these animals so i definitely see that there will be a trend uh, change coming back to the usual expenses did seem <coughs> have gone down they could have gone down more but for the moment we have be, we have succeeded in definitely reducing our expenses partly i mean naturally because of less travel less movement there has been a complete uh, lockdown on uh, travel expenses along with the actual lockdown and also during this time we tried to improve and look at certain efficiencies in terms of transport there was a lot of time that we had on hand in trying to look at various aspects of business etc so we have taken it up upon ourselves and as committed in the past calls in my notes um, in my reports that the bottom line is as important for us and it is my assurance and commitment to rise up back to the profitability the the near past historical profitability that we have shown on a year on year basis so we have already started working on them and uh, even we have adapt we have adapted ourselves to the new philosophy of working reorganizing things etc uh, coming to <clears throat> exports our exports were zero in the month of april zero in the month of may but we had pending orders and we did a reasonable good um, export business in one month itself and uh, there was a total growth on a quarter to quarter basis by 12% which uh, considering that there was no sale in two months and all the sale happened just in one month we are quite happy and um even as we speak in the month of july also orders are being executed now there are international fl- cargo f- flights that have opened up um, and things are definitely looking up for exports overall because of all the hard work that we have put in in the earlier quarters towards registering towards creating a uh, sales team etc <clears throat> Uh, and uh, taking things further from here i definitely personally see a positive trend domestic as well as internationally and this is visible absolutely in the second quarter and uh, various internal steps uh, in q1 which is also <coughs> uh, would impact the coming quarters is that you know we have always mentioned that we want to reduce the dependency on any one division on any one product uh, etc uh, we are as you know we are into vaccines as well as health products health products include medicines curative preventive growth promoters etc we are definitely now uh, in the vaccine we have got a reasonable good market share as far as uh, poultry is concerned on the animal side uh, cattle sheep goat uh, buffalo etc the 90% of the vaccines are supplied through tender where there is no actual marketing efforts that we need to make we have now started focusing aggressively on the health products which in terms of revenues could be would be rather bigger than vaccines overall uh, in days to come so this focus with health products would definitely make a positive impact as well as make the top line grow reasonably fast and uh, if you are coming on to the vaccine for the animal health the specifically the, the brucella vaccine as you are aware i have been saying this i did mention in the last quarter and in the quarter earlier than that that we bid we uh, the tenders have been opened the government of india was to start procuring the brucella vaccine from february unfortunately due to the covid reasons 
uh, this whole thing has got delayed in our communication with uh, the central government with the ministries with the department of animal husbandry i have reasons personally i have reasons to believe that this should start very soon probably in the next 60 days or so towards um, the government of india starting their procurement of brucella vaccine for which we are one of the two contenders for this uh, the brucella vaccine supply under the national animal disease control program of the government of india uh, talking um, about the human covid vaccine the our status remains that uh, things are under research and development and as committed we seem to be heading to start the uh, the animal trial sometime in the month of november december the timeline continues to be what we had earlier told and as far as the current status is concerned it truly gives us an indication that we are moving positively towards maintaining the timeline at least for this moment so overall the covid pandemic situation has uh, impacted micro as well as uh, macro level issues it's been a game changer in many ways and we are working hard towards adapt ourselves to the changing environment as well as towards the changing needs internally within the organization and uh, there have been you know everything has changed in terms of communication in terms of uh, people moving meeting creating demand etc all these things there has been many changes we are adapting ourselves and all this definitely i think is headed towards getting in more efficiencies into our organization coming to hester nepal we have done significantly low um, because of the lockdown nepal there was a lockdown plus complete stoppage of all international flights even as on today there aren't any international flights moving in and out so had there been orders we would have not been able to execute it there weren't any orders so it is not that we have lost any business it's just that orders have not come from fao but uh, now things have started moving tenders have started coming and uh, things are looking up besides fao procurement there are direct country orders there are two orders which we have already confirmed in this financial year based on that what we already have we believe that we will be able to meet our this year's top line and the bottom line target as far as hester uh, nepal is concerned the focus also is now on the domestic sales in fact uh, the sales that uh, we have uh, done at the moment uh, in uh, nepal uh, uh, it's all the the residual sale it's all come from domestic sales but everything was in fact more shut than what it is even over here uh, texas life sciences our subsidiary which manufactures health product as i mentioned earlier that we intend to focus on our animal health product range we have made an additional investment we had a rights issue of 1.5 crores that is 15 million uh, indian rupees towards expanding our uh, <coughs> assets uh, buying we acquired the, um, the the neighboring plot which already has a building which was which is rather uh, a pharma formulation unit so having acquired that we will now expand our capacity towards uh, producing more of the products that we are already producing as well as adding other type of uh, um, <clears throat> product range over there like injectables etc so we would add on to this and we would grow the business in texas life science in commensurate to the growth that what we see in uh, hester biosciences india notwithstanding the registrations of hester of texas we would do also independently in africa so we would also in the next 6 to 8 months time we foresee that texas would also directly export to hester uh, tanzania uh, hester tanzania uh, the surprising part or the difference between our lockdown over here and in tanzania was that in tanzania the lockdown uh, implications are now being seen seen in the early times there weren't as many strict uh, it was not as a strict lockdown as what we have seen in india 
but now things are catching up even over there the only problem that we have now is that we are not able to move people from india to tanzania to execute all the uh, installation of equipment utilities etc work is going on there as uh, we see there is a delay of approximately 2 weeks at this point of time there could be a little more delay because of this uh and uh, the inability to move from here to there but i we do not foresee anything be- uh, major delay because we are also seeing in fact in some of the agencies etc the work has been faster for things which we are not dependent anything from outside tanzania things have happened pa- fast the whole construction is over roads are ready cemented roads in the whole plant etc so that way we are moving uh, reasonably fast in our uh, uh, manufacturing uh, <clears throat> facility that we are constructing over there and uh, we have got a lot of support from the government in a way that they are very supportive in in issuing us licenses in trying to help us towards uh, every single thing in getting visas etc there is no delay that we see in terms of our uh, needs uh, uh, i mean there are no unfulfilled needs that we have as far as the government of tanzania is concerned so overall it has been a uh, little bit of a low uh, <clears throat> sales in this uh, year if you talk about geography in domestic we were down by 11% in sales exports grew by 12% on the poultry the poultry division there was a degrade the growth of 11 but on the animal healthcare there was a growth of 6% and uh, the overall uh, as you know the sales have gone down by 8% so this is all from me from my side and with this i um, give the uh, mic back to uh, the host and i am willing to take uh, questions thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session any one who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles The first question is from the line of Kuntal Shah from Oakland Capital. Please go ahead. Hey Rajiv, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah. So uh, I have questions on you know uh, we are beginning uh, you know uh, uh, um, R&D on human vaccine front, but uh, my question was uh, what are the skill sets, cost, and timeline and risk reward you perceive in this area? and how does this compare with the animal companion vaccine for you know fat dogs and cats and all those things because that's an area which is not yet covered by us secondly or as far as diagnostic the diagnostic initiatives are concerned for both poultry and large animals what are the new products you have in development and are you planning to set up lab in nepal and tanzania similar to one you have done in, in anand on on fmd side uh, what are your capex plans for nepal tanzania and indiana in, in india and as far as the financials are concerned uh, can you give the exact number of gross debt and receivable situation and inventory situation uh, which was pertaining to last quarter where we saw inventory had spiked to 63 crore and receivables was more than 58 crore also the question is we have a, a healthy cash balance and we had debt also so can we you know i presume that uh, once our capex is over we will be getting capital grant so can we use some kind of a flexi term where you know our cash is better utilized to to repay the debt in short term and uh, some kind of short term we don't miss out on the dif- difference between the borrowing cost and the uh, cost of the money we keep in the bank okay question 1 on uh, human vaccines timeline etc on the human vaccine side Uh, we are all geared up to complete up to the animal trials at this point of time and then we would have to take on the commercial uh, or the the production and then the human phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 phase 4 trials etc we are in talk with companies for uh, 
uh, who would who are keen to work with us towards the manufacture as well as taking the human uh, trials etc so at this point of time i would not be able to really give you an idea about uh, those things uh, the talks are at a reasonable uh, confidential level but definitely they are at a reasonable high um, level uh, uh, in terms of finalizing on how we would want to take it further so we have been able to identify probable partners who would take who could work with us towards everything after the animal trials have been successfully over so that's for uh, the human thing uh, the second one was diagnostics you have mixed up two things one is a diagnostics laboratory and one is a diagnostics uh, kits that we could manufacture so these two are different things in anand we have a diagnostics lab where we get uh, samples and we do uh, analysis on the health uh, on the flock on the health of the flock on the health of the cattle sheep goat uh, yes we would in days to come have a laboratory of that sort in uh, um, in in africa in tanzania we hope to set up such a lab at the moment we have no plans to set up a lab like of that sort in nepal Uh, because um, the country is uh, very small most of our business is export related getting the samples everything from outside into nepal would definitely be a challenge etc so that is not what uh, we are going to be doing um on the uh, then what was your next question i mean so uh, uh, another question was on the uh, uh, any uh, thoughts on the animal the companion animals a uh, a companion animal at the moment there are no plans that we have to get into companion animals uh, we don't see anything in the near horizon to get onto companion animals companion animal market is a very big market in the west and in the united states but in india that market is relative i would say on a relative basis it is extremely small Uh, and we would continue our focus on production animals at this point of time okay so my uh, unanswered questions were you know regarding fm foot and mouth disease yeah yes fmd is a desire that we would get into we are working and looking at various options uh, uh, we are yet a little far away from um me able to give you a surety on a plan further if we uh, get into fmd it will definitely uh, that we will construct a new plant we will raise finances and we will start the whole project uh, uh, by ourselves but at this point of time i am not in a position to give you any precise uh, timeline or a commitment on that Okay, and so any comment on the what is the status of exact gross debt we have right now and the receivables and inventory situation spilled over from last quarter? Uh, I may have just a minute. Our our gross uh, <coughs> debt in India is thirty nine point one two crores in Q one F I twenty one. as on q1 fy20 it was 41.35 and so receivable in the marginal reduction and the receivable uh and the re- i do not have the receivable figure with me while i am talking to you but uh, to give you a little idea on the receivables during the covid time we could have done much much bigger sales had we been loose and had we been more uh, less restrictive uh, uh, and not worrying about payment but we have been as restrictive in our sales as what we were before definitely to some clients we have given more credit etc but uh, i have reasons to believe that uh, our receivables have not shot up in any which way higher than uh, what uh, they would have been in those uh, earlier times uh, in fact yes while i'm talking to you our receivables are uh, uh, this is uh, 44 um, and uh, in, in q4 it was also 44 okay 
so mm. it has not gone up at all now marginally by some uh, 10 lakhs or something like that so so we have a capital working progress in tanzania around 74 crores and we have debt of around 76 crores and we have cash of around 23 crores so is there some way to you know uh, have some kind of working capital which gets knocked off so we don't end up paying the difference between the cost of keeping money in our bank versus cost of borrowing and if what is the cost of borrowing anyway we are incurring in this a cost of borrowing is 3% per annum okay yeah so probably that answers your question that it is not a thing and our focus right now is just setting up this whole plant properly i mean even as we have money we have not deployed funds anywhere in trying to reduce our uh, or uh, you know earn something out of all those things because we have just kept it it's a foreign country we we are very conservative in this way and we would want to play it conservative Yeah. Excellent. Thanks, man. All the best. Thank, Thank you. you. The next question is from the line of Viraj Mahadevia, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, Rajiv. Bhai. Um, not bad results, I guess, given the circumstances. Couple of questions from my my end. One is, uh, has to achieve sales of poultry vaccines and healthcare products of hundred to hundred and twenty-five crores. uh clearly these were difficult conditions for poultry customers can we assume 125 as a base for this business uh and you are talking at visa we our last year turnover as is absolute amounts 125 crores is that a uh, uh, the the absolute bottom level for for this category no, we will do more than that so so this is the the worst it will get is what you're saying oh yeah yeah i mean yes yes yeah. absolutely that was a question uh can you share the value of exports in consolidated sales in fy20 and what what was the growth during the year and what growth do you expect in the in the new financial year uh i do not uh, on a consolidated basis uh, where is the consolidated there are so many sorry yeah i uh, the approximate growth in terms of export in terms of percentage has been 11% in fy20 uh yeah in the whole uh, no i'm talking about q1 in fy20 i think i would have shared the figures earlier with you uh, last time in the call but uh, the total uh, export Uh, yeah they were around 10% or something uh, as compared to the sales last year if i am not mistaken yes they were around 10% uh, this year it has gone to 11 in q1 but this percentage will definitely increase i mean you can imagine there was zero sale in april and may right so the share of exports this year will increase yes yes the share of exports will increase were in domestic versus international business and the share of health products will increase in terms of uh, vaccines versus health products then tell me baraji bhai if health products increase i would suspect health products are slightly lower margin products right versus our vaccine so if we have a adverse mix change towards health products our blended margins will move down is are you suggesting that um our selection of products is such even on the health products that yes there is a little difference but the difference is little as i said it's not something that here we have gross margins uh, you know why if you take our gross margins in the 60s but then the health products are at a gross margin of 40 so that the whole average shifts it's nothing of that sort okay okay understood Can you share the status of Brusella and PPR for India as well as PPR exports from India and Nepal? PPR, to the, uh, I'll tell you. Last year we have um, see these are figures of last year which we I would have covered in my last uh, uh, you know in my call last year and uh, uh, because we have done reasonably well in Nepal where we converted. Uh, our sales into becoming profitable in terms of uh, uh, we have reasons to believe that q1 has gone dry but q2 q3 q4 we will make up and we will definitely cover up because uh, this movement has going to pick up there is no um, other way but 
for the movement to pick up in terms of uh, brusella uh, the uh, tenders are out bids accepted it's just a matter of time before which the business would start for brusella vaccine in india and that in itself is uh, we are looking forward to that business excellent and uh, can i can we assume that the working capital terms on these tenders are pretty reasonable and in line with your broader working capital or can we expect absolutely i can tell you that there has been uh, no delay as far as uh, i mean this is the first time that we would be dealing under a central tender but we have been supplying brusella ppr in india to states everything uh, is uh, it's it's more or less uh, in line with our usual credit terms it's nothing extraordinary at all excellent thank you to answer your question sorry yeah it's secured it's fully secured okay perfect last question rajiv bhai you mentioned that there's some cost cutting that you all have done now uh, clearly in the last call you mentioned that we are increasing our our, our field force for the field uh, our sales and marketing so that's going to increase i guess some of the employee benefits expenses so are we here talking about other expenses as the category uh, as you reported it where you all are looking to prune costs and this will be the new normal going forward Uh, uh one is of course there has been no salary cut in the organization uh, but travel costs have come down tremendously and a lot of uh, other administrative operational costs we have uh, uh, cut down and uh, that definitely is helping us and you will see this see in this quarter had our sales been even higher by 2 to 3 or 4 crores uh viraj the whole thing would have appeared differently because if you see our cost and everything has gone uh, our cost have gone down in this quarter itself it's the lesser sale that is making us uh, compare ourselves with q4 in terms of expenses or q corresponding q1 but had this quarter had given us a little more sale view i mean the, our figures would have uh, reflected that very easily okay. all the best for the year ahead thank you viraj thank you thank you the next question is from the line of udit jain from carvi stock broking please go ahead yeah thanks for taking my question sir uh, i wanted to ask about you know th- how do we see the health segment uh, going forward let's say 3 to 4 years down the line health segment is a big very big segment and uh, uh, i think this segment is definitely going to grow we are adding more products we have uh, uh, we have uh, many products in the pipeline to come up and if you see a typical animal health company worldwide the sales of their health products is always much more than the sales of their vaccines maybe two or three times we are one of those uh, uh, of very different odd whatever you call it where vaccine sales is some three times or something to that of the health product sales so i think the uh, opportunities are immense and we are now putting in a lot of efforts as far as uh, health products is concerned another thing that i would want to just i remembered right now while talking uh, while i was answering viraj's call that you know he mentioned that the gross margins would be less the capital investment required initially to make health products is far lesser than what it requires for vaccines so our initial cost capital cost itself itself would be very low that would also contribute towards higher profitability and uh, so coming back to your question uh, health products is definitely a growth area that we are looking at very seriously and when i say health products it includes medicines health uh, product health products uh, growth promoters uh, uh, disinfectants etc and so when you say uh, the health segment should be let's say 3 to 5x of the vaccine segment Uh, do you feel that kind of you know uh, kind of customer level awareness is there in india to, to take that forward um i mean to give you 
some statistics. I mean, I do not have statistics to give you an idea. You can take some of these companies that are big in India on the animal health side, Verbac, uh, uh, and uh, you can say Zoetis. You can even take the animal health division of Zydus, etc. I mean, there seventy percent of the sales would be coming from the health products, and that too on the animal side rather than the poultry side. Understood, understood, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Krishna Parekh from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations. This was a good quarter. uh given the scenario i just wanted to ask uh, what was the maintenance capex for fy20 the maintenance uh, capex in the sense uh, 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 the, the engineering side the maintenance of the plant uh, i have not understood uh, so uh, you know the certain capex that you have to do to maintain the capacities at the same level okay okay uh i do not have that uh, figure in mind but i would not mind sharing that figure with you i i do not have it right okay, now okay that's fine all that's okay papers, with all the uh, papers that i have but i don't have this figure with me i'm that's sorry that's fine but i will share it with you nonetheless okay thank you uh and also has the tanzania uh, i might have missed that part but why are we having such a huge increase in profit extra tanzania is a trading company mm -hmm. and uh, products over there in uh, africa are sold at much more higher prices than what they would be sold over here so it could be that this quarter we sold products where our profitability was even higher than what it would have been otherwise so it would have just been that product mix uh, the sales uh, yes the profitability is high but the sales are low i have not dwelled um, into myself on actually the product mix that has been sold over there because there are health products as well it's not just vaccines alone so but profitability overall in africa is higher than what it is in india okay because we have doubled our sales and i think more than uh, i think you know from 0.25 to 3.78 is the profitability so that's a mind boggling term so yeah i know no i'll tell you see uh, now um, while i while you were asking the question i was just uh, internally i was being uh, told uh that you know there are one or two products and there are one or two customers uh, uh from where we got some specific uh, orders which were extremely highly profitable so uh, over and above the normal profit so that has also contributed towards us making this uh, high level of profit uh, in tanzania okay that's fantastic i think uh, thank you that's all from my side yeah thank you thank you A reminder to the participants: Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Manish Jain from Gormal One. Please go ahead. Ajeev, uh, uh, first of all, congratulations on very steady numbers despite the COVID background. Now, on a strategic level, the world has realized how difficult it is to make vaccines. and uh, your uh, vaccine range will be the largest in the world once tanzania starts uh now you have mentioned in your press release that certain game changing impacts longer term have happened for uh, hester so can you just give us some insight strategic insight what are the positives broad positives and negatives longer term which have happened due to the pandemic uh see due to the pandemic there was a lot of time for introspection not only for us for i am sure everybody all of us who are on this call and everywhere in the world so it has given us a lot of time to think and uh, relook at things which probably we i would not say doing it wrong but we would have been doing it in a certain manner but because of the constraints that one because of the constraints of actual business not happening and two because of a lot of time in our hand we started viewing things in a different manner and trying to make sure that how we are able to uh, really move further with these changing things another thing is that i have come to a firm conclusion that on the marketing side the cost of 
marketing due to the travel the movement of the sales team definitely uh, the marketing cost should go down not only for us across horizon for most of the companies whether it is rural or whether it is urban marketing because you know marketing through talking on the phone or video conferences or trying to show um, it through the laptop you know a simple thing is what i'm trying to say is uh, that uh, uh, even in terms of uh, annual report being printed now we don't have to print the annual report so you know all these things all put together they have uh, reduced our cost uh, even internationally people are now willing to talk willing to discuss i'll tell you earlier we had to go to certain countries to talk to their higher officials during this time we have been talking to two government officials and all is everything is on video and now hopefully we might be getting the ppr orders directly from the country so this whole travel cost one it is going to change and in terms of efficiency um, i think uh, it will have a long term impact because we have been internally thinking on many of these things and how to change things etc another thing is that we have spent a lot of time in reorganizing things internally looking at projects which projects have been doing good which have not been doing good in the earlier times you know when you have been just busy continuously doing things you overlook many of these things and you just hope that things are happening but all these things overall has changed and i think the mindset of people is now um, much more clearer and you know as no physical meeting is required to do business that in itself is a very big change i would say great and i just needed one clarification you were mentioning that to sell a opportunity in india is around 100 crores per annum ppr is around 12 to 15 crores per annum uh conservatively how much share can uh, hester get from that in terms of our uh, production Uh, capabilities given a six months time we could gear up to any level as what the government of india might want us to produce brucella vaccine but we would definitely need six to eight months time to gear up as on today if you ask us what is our capacity for brucella vaccine we are in any case geared up to around uh, uh, you can say around 40 crores Perfect. Right. I had few more, but I'll join the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manish Gandhi, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Rajiv. Why? Um, I just have uh, two, three questions. The first question is related to Tanzania plant. So, uh, is there uh, even a small risk of we are not getting the funding from Bill Gates and uh, zero, zero, zero? zero. and um, the money is already coming in our okay. bank account okay so that's great and uh, so pardon me i always ask about risk but uh, the second thing is our dependence on uh, say uh, fao tenders and as we have seen in india and nepal that uh, it's a lumpy business and what is happening in the world uh, geopolitically and there are murmurs of uh, who structurally going uh, we don't know so how dependent we are and what are the risk you see in even tanzania regarding that uh tanzania plant has not been constructed or not been planned for fao tenders nepal definitely we are concerned with fao and not who but yes both belong to the united nations on the other side as fao tenders have happened less last year there have been countries who are now directly even buying uh, the ppr vaccine uh, from their own funds rather than waiting for uh, fao tenders uh, it's something like this that ppr is a disease which is causing a lot of commercial loss in sheep and goat farming and this loss can only be mitigated by use of ppr vaccine and the cost benefit ratio is like 1 is to 100 you spend 1 rupee on a vaccine you save or you earn 100 rupees so uh, even uh, to whatever happens in terms of funding 
yes things can get get delayed but i would say that there is no chance of this uh, becoming an issue that oh here we have a plant and now nobody is buying ppr no chance at all if you look at the world requirement what fa FAO was to spend 1515 billion in 15 years 1 billion every year in 1 billion say 50% of the cost goes towards buying the vaccine and 50% administering 50% is 500 million let's talk of business which is coming to 10% of that even if it comes to 10% of them trust me we would be running around helter skelter trying to execute orders let us hope for the best and uh... lastly rajiv bhai so in animal health as you suggested so we comparatively uh, a late entrant into animal health and vaccine and uh, our competitors are much bigger than us in size say 3 4 5 years before when we started uh, so how our competitive position has moved vis-a-vis uh, competitors and why a farmer in terms of vac- uh, yes we are a small player at the moment on the animal health i agree with you on the but on the vaccine side figures are available on the net tenders that have been issued by states supplies that have been made as far as uh, ppr and brucella is concerned anybody can verify that data ester biosciences in terms of ppr we have made supplies to 80 80% of the country's state tenders that have been issued and in brucella we would be more or less at that level maybe 10% less level say 70% so uh in terms of company yes in the turnover we would be smaller but in terms of this particular vaccine because other companies are even making other vaccines also so if you look at brucella and ptr alone definitely we are bigger than any company that you would say in fact i would want to make one bold statement uh, for all of you to know ester biosciences between india and nepal today is the world's biggest supplier of ppr vaccine there is nobody even half of our size who has supplied um, uh, uh, i mean who there is nobody big who has even made even 50% of supplies of what hester biosciences has made in the world so that's something which uh, definitely should give you an idea um as far as our vaccine capability is concerned uh, in terms of health product we are growing the business we are very small we know we are very small there are companies which have even in india 100 200 300 crore turnovers uh, we are working towards becoming big right so so do you plan to take market share from others or do you feel that market itself will grow in animal health product and uh, why if i am a farmer if i am buying from bigger competition will now buy products from hester uh one is that we have to snatch something from the current market i cannot say that our products will only be penetrated where uh, the market is growing definitely we are here to take a part of the existing market share and why should one buy our product vis-a-vis the competitors product or what they are already buying that is for our sales team and us to pursue push and convince them and to make them buy this is a uh, uh, this is a continuous process for anybody in marketing anywhere in the world whether it is vaccines computers health products furniture anything so we have to push ourselves in and we will push ourselves in that's all right okay uh, all the best thank you very much thank you thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Anirudh Chetty from Sol- Solidarity Portfolio. Please call it. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Uh, just to continue with the last question on this market share gain from health products. Uh, so, do we have any sort of cost advantage or like a better product that will allow us to gain market share? Uh, 
I mean, everybody says that their product is the best. So do we also. But uh, uh, you know, there are competitors. Everybody is selling similar products, if not similar, a little change in formulation, etc. It is at the end of the day our marketing capability, the philosophy, and the zeal, the zest, the determination, and the technical inputs of a product with which we try to sell a product is going to make a product sell. So, I mean, product is good, and a lot is also on the marketing capabilities of uh, uh, the company. All companies, uh, whether it is animal health or anything, you know, everybody has similar product. So, uh, we definitely, I cannot say that our product protein C or uh, uh, some other product is. Um, uh, is the only product and it is completely different, etc. I would it would be a wrong statement, but we have to show what are the benefits of our product. The cost benefit analysis has to be given, and we will try to sell our product that way. Okay, uh, and so and then uh, my next question was on the uh, SAO PPR opportunity. Intuitively, it seems very large, but just wanted some sense on, uh, you know, uh, if you guys have done some math on uh, over the life of this program, if essentially how many, uh, you know, goats or sheep will be vaccinated and, you know, approximately what is the cost uh, per vaccine? So then what can the, you know, market opportunity be yeah. for this? Uh, yeah, point number one, it is not an, it doesn't, it's not intuitive. There is an FAO document that is available and uh, if you have uh, access to that, if you can just do a Google search on uh, FAO PPR, you will be able to access that document. I do not have those figures ready with me in hand right now, but uh, over 15 to 20 years, they want to eradicate this disease. There is a past, there are past uh, um, historical data available on how a disease has been eradicated. For example, smallpox in human being render pest in cattle. So there are instances. <clears throat> this should be a repetition of what has happened in the past, and uh, um, there is a good reasoning available for uh, <clears throat> succeeding towards eradicating uh, this disease. <clears throat> to answer your question, I do not have specific figures in hand right now, number of sheep go to be vaccinated, etc. Okay. Uh, and just a basic question on the vaccine. So, like, you know, for our key products like PPR, Brucella, and some of our poultry vaccines, what is the, uh, you know, uh, frequency, uh, you know, the, the, the animal or the poultry needs to be, you know, given the vaccine? And is it, uh, and is it like a one-time thing or does it have to be given over the life? Uh, uh, various disease, yeah, yeah. Various diseases uh, have to be uh, um, uh, addressed uh, in a different manner. To give you a simple example, one takes polio vaccine once in one's lifetime, while you might take an influenza vaccine every year. So, likewise, there are some diseases which require a one-time shot. Some diseases which require a repetitive shot. Uh, shot. Now, the repetition depends upon the characteristic of the disease and the animal or the host ability to create, to have the protection against it. So, different diseases have different ways uh, uh, and uh, vaccination schedule. In poultry, Marex is a disease where you only vaccinate them once on day one of the one-day-old chick. Brucella is a vaccine you vaccinate only once uh, to a calf. Uh, in poultry, there are, uh, see, PPR uh, and all these vaccines are to be given repeatedly. In poultry, there is a Newcastle disease vaccine live, which might have to be given every three to four months, depending on the nature of the disease in that environment. So each disease has its own characteristic and uh, the host's ability to protect itself from that. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. Hmm. 
I think the questions are over. Uh, no questions in the queues as of now. Okay, then so, uh, your line, yes, in comments. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, <clears throat> thank you all for being there, asking questions. If there are unanswered questions, please direct them directly to me. I would make sure that I would satisfactorily answer all the questions uh, uh, towards, uh, I think there was a question on the maintenance. We'll even try to answer that uh, uh, question. Uh, one more thing that uh, if you all have seen um, our press note on page three in the end, uh, we have uh, given the link uh, <clears throat> for the brucella disease and the brucella disease um, vaccine uh, film that we have made as Hester Biosciences. I would urge each one of you to have a look at this um, video film. It's not <clears throat> for the promotion <clears throat> of the vaccine to any one of you, but it will give you a little idea on the brucella disease. It's just a general knowledge uh, uh, that could uh, help towards understanding the brucella disease as well as the vaccine. So uh, with that, I thank all of you uh, to come on to the call, taking out time, uh, considering us as relevant enough to, uh, you know, come and hear me out and ask questions. Hope this thing continues um, in future every quarter. And uh, thank you all once again. And uh, we shall remain in touch. Thank you.